Yeah, I'm I'm going to say Tommy Luluai. That's not it's not a crazy shout, but I I think it's going to be one of the back rowers, so it's going to be either Joe Greenwood or John Bateman. Um, let's plump for John Bateman. Okie doke. Uh, do you have any any particular? Let's let's also let's do a bit more. Let's go. Who do you think will be first try scorer in the game? First try scorer. Uh, I'm Gildart. I'm going the same wing. I'm going Don Manfredi. So uh, the not so that so the non golden edge is is where we're we're feeling it for Wigan. Uh, okay. Um, Let's do the Women's Super League Grand Final then. I think it's been announced now that it's going to be streamed live on the R League app, but get down to the regional arena if you can. Uh, Saturday at 1pm, basically. Because we'll be there. Basically. If nothing else, you can come and see us in the flesh. You can get on a tram from Manchester City Centre. Well, I better write this down because I'm going to get lost otherwise. Right, you want to get on a tram at Piccadilly. Yeah. Um, to the Etihad campus. Yeah. And then get then then after the games have finished at the Etihad campus, we're going to get on a tram pretty much as quickly as we can, back all the way through, and we're going to get off. I think at Exchange Key or Salford Keys, and walk over to the stadium from there. Um, and the tram ride is about 35 to 40 minutes, so hopefully that'll get us to the to grand final to the to the sta- to the to the Old Trafford Fan Park for around about 4 p.m. Okay, would be the expectation so anyone wanting to get involved with us um, I've never about... been on a Manchester tram before so I'm, God knows where I'll end up Croydon well, probably well I'll be getting into Manchester Piccadilly around about uh, current plan around about half 11 and then getting the next tram out to the regional arena so it'll be there for about 12 o'clock so catch the second half of the championship final um, which I'm not even sure who it's between if the is it Witness and Stanning Lee, maybe? I think uh, Lee did. I think Lee won, didn't they? Oh, is it Witness versus Lee then? Let's have a look. See if our my top notes tell me. No, they don't. Anyway, mm. whoever's anyway. in that, we'll see you the second half of that. It doesn't even say on the on the Pay coming point. up this week. So who knows? No. Two uh, two two very able championship sides. Yeah. And then it'll be the big one, Leeds versus Wigan. And we're going to predict that now. And I am going to pick Wigan by four. I'm going to say... Are you going to say it's going to be a Becky Greenfield try to win and you're going to explode? 10-6. No, I, I, as much as I'm all about Becky, Becky Greenfield, I'm um, I'm even more at the moment about Rachel Thompson. Just because in, in the last three games, I think she, she's been uh, huge. Um to me she was the man of the match on 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 Sunday and she was probably the man of the match the week before in the uh, in the last game of the regular season as well so i think Rachel Thompson will be crucial plus getting Michelle Davies back is big for or Davis back for Wigan is big because she's the goal kicker and when she's not playing Wigan don't convert any kicks at all but she she cracked one over from the sideline in this game um, on Sunday and uh, so that's crucial uh, so, so yeah Wigan by four Rachel Thompson to win the Sally Sunderland trophy I've made that up I don't know what man yeah. of the will be called I'm guessing they'll be sorry, player of the match surely yeah um, I I think Leeds will do this I think they'll have they've got too much firepower generally I think they've shown they've got they've got quite a good team spirit as well I think that will carry them. I think it's going to be a great game. Um, but I think Leeds, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 24 points to 20. I think Ooh, it's going I'm, to be close. But I, I think it's going to be. I think there's going to be some scores in it. I think lower scoring in Wigan 10-6 with the uh, great goal line defence that they've been showing of late. They'll come through. And the, the, yeah, it's probably the two best conditioned sides in that competition as well. Uh, and we're talking about amateur rugby league here, so best conditioned is relative but um, yeah I think it's set for a cracking final uh, championship playoff I don't know what the title of this game is but that playoff game that's happening to decide the last place of the championship um, promotion final I think it's called 
Uh, maybe, no, that was the what, can that we, was what can happened we? before. The promotion yeah. relegation playoff, I think they're calling it. it, it, it the, coin, the coin fell on the side of Swinton, so it's at Haywood Road. It's a three o'clock kickoff, isn't it, on um, Sunday afternoon this weekend. Swinton host Workington. Interesting, interesting occasion. Where, where's your money? I think Workington, I think you always psychologically favour the team that been on the up because they are conditioned to winning, conditioned to getting out. And I think their level of performance is going to be higher. I think I can't see you raising raising a team that's spent the majority of their year losing to suddenly get up to win this one-off game. I just can't see it. Plus, I kind of want to go to Swinton next year, not Workington. So quite like that. Just because of the short travel. Uh, well, yeah, but well, and more variety. You know, I'd rather a weekend in Manchester than Workington. Well, um, I think Swinton will win. Uh, it really depends on what they can get out of their dual reg partners, Wigan. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Wigan will know who isn't playing in the grand final by that point. But it's whether those lads still go out celebrating if Wigan win, <laughs> or uh, as I predict, or sort they might they might still do and just rock up still celebrating yeah but I certainly think if they can get Josh Woods Joe Brown well Joe Brown also uh, you'd hope be available Craig Mullen maybe someone like that I'm not sure who they can have um, then I think it'll put them in a good good position for Swinton and um, I'd I wonder if Carl, uh, not Carl, Leon Price is going to be at Workington next year, and I wonder if Workington will be able to raise all the players because there's been lots of talk about that being an issue, and I just think even though these teams tend to triumph in adversity down the lower le- lower ends, I just don't, I just don't know how much adversity they can cope with, and I'm going with Swinton because I feel like even though, like you say, they've been losing a lot. I think there's a little bit more stability about their run into this game in a weird way. Yeah, so, well, I suppose yeah. they've known they're in it for longer, haven't they? They well, yeah, by a week, yeah. Yeah, and well, they you know, they certainly were more aware of the possibility of it. Also, the, I don't know because they they've said less about having players on holiday as well, whereas Workington have been very public in talking about how many people they're going to have out from that perspective. So. You could see it that way around. And that was before it could be kind of classed as gamesmanship because it was when they yeah. hadn't even got into the playoffs properly yet or not well, not known what place in the playoffs they were going to finish, certainly. So uh, interesting there then. Um, that's, that's everything looked at. I mean, that's, that's the final predictions of the season. Uh, let's see if we'd be as good as we've been all season, which is about two-thirds right. <laughs> so there we go. Two out of those three games we're going to get right yeah. somewhere. Somehow. which means we're going to have to win because yeah because how can because one of they've them got, has to they've, got to win, right. well, they've got to win one game at least yeah well let's hope let's hope it's a double for my Warriors from my perspective but from everyone else's perspective let's hope that we see some fantastic intense high calibre rugby league action that's decided by the like, men on the by the players on the field and uh, and the the skill and determination that they can show right that is that is it my, other my, than well my, my one dilemma for Saturday is which shirt to wear ooh okay we need to get I mean, a poll out for this don't we I've what got the options I've got about 40 so uh, let's let's, let's narrow do it down the options so let's narrow it down so we've got Coventry Bears home this year of course we've we all got... we're all aware that Coventry's Home shirt next year is going to be um, Quite fun. blue and then see-through hoops. Yeah, it might it might be a bit more jazzy. Who knows? It's uh, said that there have been hints of something quite quite fun. Horizontal hoops, then. Okay, we know that it's going to be. We basically know that you're going to be able to see players' nipples through the shirt. I mean, they're um, that tight you can anyway yeah. if you really want to. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Um, so we've got that one, which is quite a very nice shirt. The black with the bear on it. Do quite like that one. Uh, we've got my home SLP shirt. jersey. Yeah, the home shirt. I thought it was blue. That's the away shirt. Ah, okay. Although they did play some of the games in the high summer when it was so hot you couldn't wear black. They did have to play them in the blue away shirt. Ah, okay. Maybe they were ones I saw highlights of. Was that when they were on the winning run? Um, had a bit of both. Yeah, certainly the Keithley game was in the blue. There you go. This is... Let's get, let's get the blue and see through for next year. Anyway, Coventry Bears home is one option. Yeah, my SLP jersey. Okay. From 
couple of years ago. That's yeah. uh, that got that out of the thing. Oh, yeah, did we do them? Twenty fifteen, I think they were, weren't they? Yeah, uh, might have been twenty six. I think I was here, so I think it would have been twenty sixteen. Right. I think it was after I'd moved. Okay. I, I think. Anyway, say that it might not have been. I think it was twenty fifteen, but the SLP jersey either way. Yeah. Um, or we've got so we've got some Great Britain numbers in there, which that could get dug out. We've I'll got a um, PB shirt as an option, and then you can pick which one. Uh, we've got a rep, couple of retro uh, KR ones as well. We've got one of the Lloyd's TSB ones. Retro whole KR shirt, right? They are the four options that we'll put out as a poll. The listeners will decide what you're wearing, Tim. Fair enough. <laughs> if they can let me know by Thursday night, then I can pack. <laughs> well, we'll run the poll until that point, and. Uh... That we could. Uh, I might. I might pick that the second runner-up and have one at the women's game in the afternoon, and then swap. Swap shirts at some point. It's an option. It's it's an option for variety. We will. Yeah. We will see. Obviously, I'll be wearing Wigan shirts, so there's no poll needed there, really. Can we not? Can we not choose which of your Wigan shirts, or does? No, it, I'll be wearing the. We go the uh, cherry and white one, or the cherry and white one. Uh, well, you won't even see it because I'll have a, like a Wigan hoodie over my Wigan shirt and then a Wigan coat over the Wigan hoodie over the Wigan shirt. But we'll, uh, I might wear my Golden Edge t-shirt that I got done, but it printed a bit yellowy rather than golden, <laughs> which means I can't really wear it. But I might wear that underneath my shirt as well, just for extra layers of warmth, because it might be a cold one. We don't know yet. Actually, what is the weather doing? Let's have a look. Let's, uh, I'm, I'm hoping for uh, slightly... Yeah, coolish but not cold. If that Manchester. makes any any sense. Well, it's probably going to be wet, isn't it? Saturday. The wettest. Did you know? Did you know? Rain. Old Trafford is the second wettest Test cricket ground in the world. There have been more days lost to um, rain in any apart from the only other ground is guess where? Uh, Test match cricket ground. Yeah, has lost more days to rain than Old Trafford. I would guess one of the Sri Lankan grounds, maybe. It is. It's Gaul in Sri Lanka. Yeah, just because it's an island, isn't it? So. And the one that floods frequently as well. Yeah. Uh, rain. Rain. So. Brilliant. Although 19, so warmish. It never goes below a 40% chance of rain during the whole day. Uh, but potentially outbreaks of sun as well as the uh, afternoon develops. And yeah, relatively warm at 18 degrees. 17 degrees come kickoff time. So we shall see. Uh, we shall see. But raincoats, but not not too many layers, is what that's calling for. Okay, that that's us done now with that. So we're going to wrap up the show. Right then, Tim, SLP, episode 202, in the bag, wrap-up time, just uh, quiz time, really, as we normally do, and neither of us wrote a quiz for each other this week, so I have hastily cobbled something together um, at this stage of proceedings, Tim, and being hasty as it is, everyone who's done any prep for the quiz this week might have a good idea where we're going with this one. We are going to talk about... The Wigan Warriors versus Warrington Grand Final being the third Grand Final since 2013. So they played in 2013, 2016, and they're playing again against each other in 2018. Of course, we know that Wigan Warriors were victorious on both the previous occasions. What I want you to do is name the, the two players... Sorry, th- th- scratch that. Three players who've scored tries in the previous two grand finals that these two teams have played against each other who could be lining up in either side on Saturday so I want to know the name of the player in the side they'll be lining up for so just to recap there were three tries scored in the 2016 grand final and there were eight tries scored in the 2013 grand final all i need you to do is tell me which three players were amongst the try scorers in either of those two games that will be lining up on saturday and what they will be lining up for so i'm going for josh charnley 
Bingo. Let's take a bet on Sam. 